happy, yes, not perfect, though. That's what she said. Let's bring in our expert, Jeff Gold. Jeff, where are we going early on here? He's, Juan Martinez is really harking back. Uh, you know, talking about Bobby Juarez and Matt McCartney, pointing out the theme, hey, if she doesn't like something, she's getting out. Juan's doing a great job the last couple days. He's toned down, and what you're seeing is the beauty of cross-examination. It's called the crucible of truth, because as the days go on of cross-examination, you're seeing he's making his points, and you're watching Jody actually be manipulative on the stand with how she answers. Well, his whole point is you were manipulative, you were controlling, you had... Uh, 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 Travis where you wanted him. All these things that, that he's trying to do now, I think she's falling right in his trap, both factually and the way it's happening on the stand. Yeah, and her demeanor uh, seems to have changed again. She's more combative, and she's also really playing to that jury with every answer. Defense attorney, what do you think of this exchange, and who's winning in the all-important eyes of the jury? Well, it's first of all, it's just what we talked about before they started doing it. She is showing through her mannerisms that she is combative, that she's not laying down, that she's not taking it from the prosecutor. Who the heck would ever believe she was taking it from Travis Alexander? Juan Martinez is winning. Now, there's a danger that this gets too panic. They get into this way too much. But as it stands right now, she is showing, she is fighting the prosecutor. She's fighting the power of the state. She's not afraid of Travis Alexander. There you go. And so let's talk about when this could go too far and begin to hurt Juan Martinez and becomes, as Kirk Nurmi says, badgering. Well, look, the jury has got to be there every day. At some point, they don't want to hear the same thing and the same thing. And by the way, badgering Real is not a legal objection. Got it. Hey, <laughs> That's the, it's it's a, being argumentative. Let's get back into court. Combative again, and so is Juan Martinez, and we know that's his style. Uh, again, she'll be back on the stand 325. You will not miss a moment here on HLN News Now. I want to welcome in our expert, defense attorney Jeff Gold. Well, give us your take here. I mean, is the highlight the combat between these two and how a jury may take this all in, or is it more the substance of what she had to say? I think it's both. I, I really do. I think there was some substance here, uh, for example, about the anal sex she's been having since she was 17. We know she also had it with Daryl Brewer later. You know, I'm coming to believe substantively she's recommended that to uh, Travis as a way around this LDS standard of virginity. Uh, and, then, and then procedurally, I think Juan has laid a beautiful trap for her. I think, you know, you, he's, you know the gloves are off. We've said it many times, but today Today, the gloves are off on the idea of what actually is happening procedurally in the court between the two of them. Juan has decided, let the, let's, let's just, you know, speak the truth here. What's going on between you and me in this courtroom? You don't want to answer me because you have an answer for everything, and I want to get to the truth, and you don't. All right, we've had a lot of folks on our Facebook page, HLNTV.com, post on whether or not she should be labeled a hostile witness. Rebecca says, why isn't she being held in contempt? Why does she get special treatment? JC posts this, judge, please label her a hostile witness and force her to answer. What makes someone a hostile witness? Is she in your book, Jeff? No, 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 no. A hostile witness is when you have a witness that presumptively is on the other side and um, you're calling them. And when you call your own witness, you can only ask direct questions. And then what happened? And so what happened next? And you want to say, isn't it true? X, Y, Z. So you want to ask leading questions. The prosecutor is on cross-examination. He can ask leading questions. Uh, the, uh, the other side is always hostile. So she's yeah. a hostile witness. That's the truth of the matter. Yeah, and let's, again, she is the defendant here. Well, let's listen to it. Let's listen to some of that combat back and forth. She goes as far as to use the phrase again, uh, you're making my brain scramble. She's focusing in on his <laughs> anger. Let's listen to that, Jeff. With regard to this issue, depends on the style that's being used, right? That's what the truth knows. Objection, argumentative. This characterizes her testimony. Jane, rephrase. You're saying that you are having trouble <laughs> telling us. You're telling us the truth from the witness stand, right? Absolutely. You're telling us that you're having telling having trouble telling us the truth because of the way the questions are being posed, right? Objection, this characterizes her testimony. Overruled, you mean? I have no problem telling the truth. How about that last line there? I have no problem telling the truth. And Juan Martinez, of course, jumped all over that comment as well. Listening to that again, Jeff, any further analysis here about who won and lost and how this played out? 
Well, first of all, she says, I will always tell the truth. Right. Um, uh, that's a lie. <laughs> the fact that she says it. You know, the other day she said she was ambidextrous. I think she's ambiveritous. Can she tell the truth? Uh, every time she says something, it, it's different. That Look, this back and forth that she's doing will not serve her well. Um, when you're listening to testimony as a jury, you want to get to it. What's the truth here? All this back and forth, all her being very pedantic, very rigid about the question and the rules, actually trying to act like her own lawyer and it, 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 on the stand there, will not help her. They just want to know what happened that day with Travis. All this other stuff is getting in the way. It's not going to serve her. It will not make them like her. And ultimately, they want. she wants them to like her. All right. Uh, Jeff Gold back with us, our defense attorney, our expert's been following this. What would you think of that theme? Amidst all the combat, was that effective? It is effective, and it's uh, as we spoke about the other day. Uh, uh, the 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 fact that she goes, you know, in the desert an hour and a half uh, to go confront Matt McCarthy's girlfriend Bianca. The fact that she's sneaky, she goes behind Tra Travis's back. She looks at these text messages. I mean, it's it's showing, you know, not just that she's sneaky, but there's an element of it that she's the hypocrite because on the one hand she's saying, you know, I I looked at these text messages or I looked at emails that were inappropriate because Travis was talking to a married LDS woman. Well, gosh, she's having every form of sex imaginable uh, with an. LDS elder, Travis. So she's sneaky. She's a hypocrite. She's a liar. Ultimately, I hope this afternoon he's going to show she's a murderer. Okay. So, and one other theme was, and she, and he hearkened back to the boyfriend, Bobby Juarez, when she's uh, 17, 18 years old. If she doesn't like something, she's getting out. And he pointed it That's out right. with her, even her own mom. Mom was at, wasn't acting right. She was too negative, too many excuses. Mom had to go too. Well, the, you know, the irony of all this and the reason why there is such a mix today of the procedure and the substance, the substance is what really happened, the procedure is what's going on in court, is this. This is cross-examination. The point of it in our Constitution is the right of confrontation. So the very fact of what's going on is he is confronting her and then substantively he's showing that she's confrontational. She doesn't, she doesn't shy away from an issue when she thinks something's not right. She confronts Travis. Okay. She confronts Matt McCartney. Got it. Help us out here. And this is some great Facebook comments, HLNTV.com. Carol posts this. I think Martinez, one, should have a large calendar to help Jody focus. It would alleviate all this banter back and forth uh, about the date in question. Delinda says, though, Martinez is doing a great job jumping around, staying off the order of dates that Jody has obviously memorized. Some of our viewers find this confusing, but you say what as our expert? Well, traditionally, uh, a cross-examiner will go out of sequence because it's basically harder for a witness to keep their story straight when you're jumping around. Mm. So you kind of want to do it. You remember, cross-examination is not the time in which Juan is arguing to the jury, although they keep saying he's argumentative. It is the time for him to pick up pieces, chips, that he can then cash in during closing argument. He's making points. That testimony is there that allows him now to put them together in the right way, in the logical way, at closing. That's what cross-examination does. Gets the chips, spend them at closing. So Delinda, our viewer, wins that point. All right, much more coming up. Celine Darkelstanian, she's in that courtroom. She'll be joining us. We'll be talking to Jane as well and let you listen to more explosive testimony. Stay with us.